Uh, good afternoon and welcome back to the FD Zone. We, our program for this afternoon is titled Fighting for Modernity, the Colonial Origins of Films Division's Development Documentary, 1940s to the 1970s. And our guest speaker and curator for this session is Peter Sutoris, a film scholar and filmmaker who's been working on the development film of Films Division for uh, over five years now. And it's part of his thesis called Visions of Development. So Peter is going to make a presentation um, and uh, screen six films, you know, which we'll talk about. Just very briefly about him. Um, he's finished his um, training in the history and, uh, and digital arts from Dartmouth College, USA, and um, has made a documentary on the Marshall Islands in the Central Pacific. And I already told you about his work on uh, FD. So I'd like to invite Peter. And um, we have six films which he'll tell you about. Um, so we look forward to this afternoon's program. Thanks. All right, thanks, Mukul. Um, so as, as Mukul has said, uh, we'll have six films. Uh, the way we are going to do this is we'll screen them in pairs. So there will be three sets of films. And uh, I'm going to introduce each pair. Uh, but before we get to the screening, I'll just talk for maybe 20, 30 minutes um, about my research and uh, about the, the specific argument uh, that I'm going to be uh, making today, uh, which has to do with uh, this whole idea of uh, emergency and how emergency is portrayed through films division documentaries from the 40s into, this, into the 70s. And filmmaking becomes a very interesting, interesting medium in which that both gets expressed uh, but also a medium that is, um, that is trying to actually maintain uh, this, this power structure. And so I, I looked for, for ways to, uh, to basically illustrate David Laden's argument with films. That was my, that was my original, um, original attempt uh, when I first came here in 2009. And since then a lot has evolved and you'll, you'll see that, that my argument has become a lot more complex and a, and a lot more nuanced than, than this. Um, but at, at the core of it, this is, this is still something that I'm, that I'm very interested in and that I think uh, you can see in many of the Films Division films. So I just wanted to um, point this out uh, in the beginning so that we can all sort of see to what extent the films that we'll see today reflect this, this kind of a political structure or not. Um, those four groups of the films, uh, I felt, gave me a, a pretty comprehensive picture of the kind of development um, that the government was envisioning. And with each of those groups, you can go back in time and you can look at what has been done under the colonial period, both in India and elsewhere, and you can draw parallels um, between the colonial filmmaking and the sort of post-colonial uh, films division documentary. And I'm not going to go into details for each of those categories, but um, I guess suffice it to say that uh, in each of, those, each of those groups of films, I have found very substantial uh, parallels and continuities um, comparing the colonial with the post-colonial. And finally, there is the cinematic form and the kind of language and vocabulary that um, gets applied in these films. I'm sure many of you who have, who have seen some of the early Films Division productions are familiar with this Voice of God um, type documentary where the meaning of the documentary is essentially in the commentary and the, the images that you see on the screen are simply just illustrating um, that message that the government is, is trying to convey through the film. And so as we, as we watch these, uh, I would just like to um, encourage you to, to think about these themes of emergency. Do we, do we, do we see these, um, these messages being conveyed in these films about this state of, state of exception? And uh, how does that change or not change in those, in those two decades? Um, the other thing um, that I would like to suggest, you know, is, is worth thinking about is, is really where are these films placing the agency uh, of the audience? Are they seeing the audience as an active participant in defining what development is and, and what progress is? Or is the audience conceptualized as simply a passive wheel in this, in this development machinery designed by someone else? And so in that sense, how does the how does the imagination of audiences play into the, the creation of these films? And also the imagination of the, of the filmmaker self. Um, who are these filmmakers imagining to be in relation uh, to the audience? 
And who is telling the story? I mean, whose voice is is um, is being portrayed uh, through these two films? And again, does that change or does it stay pretty constant? Those are the kinds of questions that that I'm asking myself when I look at these films. And I, I think when you when you see these two back to back, um, hopefully you'll you'll see what I mean by some of those um, arguments that I sketched out earlier. Okay, so that's it from me for now. Through the echoing passageways down the ranges in cars suspended from cables. Across the low, the engineers in whose hands lies the taming of the river travel over lands of the hills, the peace of long vistas, the white snow of the hilltops. Um, it's the case of Mr. Critic, shot in 1954 and uh, Planning for Better Living, uh, released in 1960. Um, the first film deals with opposition to uh, government development efforts and to basically, you know, with the skepticism that some of the citizens um, felt about this, this Nehruvian vision. Um, the other film, Planning for Better Living, has to do with uh, slum clearance and uh, the relocation of, of uh, slum dwellers. Um, the reason why I chose these two films uh, is that they um, take this idea of the emergency out of this, this realm of simply just industrial modernity and material progress, and they take it more also into the realm of, of ideas. Once you start um, addressing opposition, and you know, in the second film, Planning for Better Living, that's also very much there, you know, the, the reluctance of the slum dwellers to, to leave uh, the slums from which the government is trying to relocate them is very much addressed as one of the central film, uh, themes of the film. Um, you can start seeing um, how the government is imagining the opposition. And I think that's really where this idea of emergency becomes, becomes very clear uh, because you can see that these voices are, are dismissed. And the reason why they are dismissed is that there is this urgency in fighting these these battles, um, these almost military conquests, like the ones that we just we just saw. Um, so the kinds of uh, the kinds of things that um, you know again I think are worth looking out for as we as we watch these two films is is just you know how does this this idea of of emergency of of fighting for something. Um, translate into these different realms of development that that go beyond simply just just building, you know, large dams or factories or infrastructure projects um, into these more abstract um, battlegrounds. <laughs> 